Hello everybody, how are you doing? Okay, now Matt Reese here, the Welsh runner. Ben Felton, Ben is running, and Ben Parks, they're three of the most well-known running YouTubers in the UK, and they've also got the common distinction that they're all running in the Valencia Marathon on Sunday. So I thought, as I did similarly with Nick Bester, Matt Fox, and Sester Moore for the Rotterdam and then the Berlin Marathon, I'll do some analysis of their training. Hi, so of course we need a spreadsheet to look at these things. So what I've done is look at the 13 weeks apart from the last taper week prior to the race and looked at their margins so we can do a comparison with Nick Bester and Mac Fox and Seth from last time. So we can see here that during this 13 week period, Ben Felton ran the most amount of miles at 1,050 Matt did 881 and Ben did 614. Now Ben had run UTMB and had to pull out with an injury and so his build up to Valencia has been somewhat sort of less I would say than the other two and Ben and Matt were both sort of racing shorter distances over the summer. Matt did some excellent 5k and 10k PBs late summer then went straight into a nine week block and Ben was kind of doing similar. He did a half marathon PB in Copenhagen 67 minutes and then went straight into a 10 week block. And whereas Ben was basically just trying to get himself back into running, I would say. So I've had a look at their recent videos and f from what I can gather from them, Ben is targeting to run 220. That means 220 something, not necessarily under 220. Matt originally had sort of said he was trying to go for 220, but also thought that was perhaps a bit hopeful. I think today in his video, he was a bit coy, but he hinted that he was thought he was in 225 shape but also hinted that anything better than the 231 that he did in Berlin, which was really, I thought, was meant to be sort of like a 90% 90, 90 effort type of thing, will be better. So his PB is actually 229. So if you can get under 229 uh, and, and anywhere close to 225, I think you'll be doing very well. Now, Ben, interesting, Ben Parks has got the fastest PB of all three of them at 225 from three years ago in, in Valencia, the same place. But he's had a lot of injury problems since then. And this year hasn't gone much better than any of the other years. So he did 2.53 recently in the Berlin Marathon. And he was hoping, I think, to run sort of sort of 2.40. But I think with the problems he's had, I would say that I think he's going to do well to get under 2.50. I haven't actually heard what his actual target is. But I'd be very surprised if he manages to do 2.40. So if we look in a bit more detail about how the actual weeks broke down... Now, as I said, Matt didn't restart his marathon training until this 3rd of October week, and Ben didn't start it until the week before 29th of September. Now, Ben didn't start running again until 29th of August after his UTMB fall where he hurt his knee. So you can see that his mileage is a lot less than the others. I think he's done quite well, actually, to get back to some sort of fitness, but we'll delve into that a bit more. So here are the weekly mileages. So Ben managed to, to average 81 over the 13-week block, but he didn't actually didn't start his training until the 29th of September in earnest. And he had these massive four-week period here where he topped 100 miles each week with the three weeks 112. So he really did sort of go to town on a massive mileage boost here in the middle. So Matt had averaged 68 miles the week. And interesting, his highest mileage week was actually 90 before he even started marathon training. So it just goes to show that for 5 and 10k training, the high mileage tends to work. But... Interesting approach that he had um, he, was he ran the Dublin Marathon 2.31, which I thought at the time was, was, was that indicated was over 2.20. What he said now that it suggests that that was perhaps a bit closer to where he was perhaps at, but he looks like he's definitely hoping to run faster than that. I think as a result of that, and also sporting Kelly and Amsterdam, he's had some big weeks when he actually ran the marathons, but some slightly smaller ones in between. Although the last couple of weeks before the taper started, he's managed to go 80 miles there and some good, very good sessions. Ben managed 47 miles for the period, um, but you can see that once he'd actually got over that period when he was just starting up again, he did hit some weeks where he was topping 80, 60 miles. And his longest run was actually the 28 miles here in the 45k Transvolcania Trail Row. So it took him 8 hours, 55 minutes. So a bit of an unusual long run, shall we say. But yeah, he does like his trail runs, doesn't he? He also, of course, ran the Berlin Marathon in 2.53. So both Matt and Ben had run marathons in the build-up to another marathon, which I think is interesting. Ben's longest run was actually the shortest of the three, 23 miles. He didn't really do too many long runs continuously. All these sort of longer efforts were can sort of in longer sessions. So what I've also done to analyze their training in a bit more sort of a summary way is looked at how many miles they run at approximately marathon pace. Now for Matt Reese and Ben Felton, I sort of thought that's around about 5.30. So any sort of session where they were 
doing around about 5.30 pace and maybe maybe that's between sort of 5.20 and 5.40 or they just explicitly said it was marathon pace. I counted that as mar marathon pace miles. Obviously anything a bit faster than that was faster than marathon pace. That might be sort of formal sessions or bits where they just went a bit harder. And I've also counted this aerobic threshold miles that I did before. Now for those two I basically added on 30 seconds. So instead of 5.30 miling it's six minutes. Now if, for Ben, as he's not clearly not as fit, I basically added on a minute. So if his marathon pace, I think it's going to be around about 6.30. And his aerobic threshold miles is 7 minutes. Which, interestingly, he does an awful lot of his runs around 7 minutes. So I don't know whether that is just a pace that he feels comfortable with. But you can see that here, that results in him doing this huge amount of aerobic threshold miles, 275. But I think when I looked at it, most of his runs of late that he would call even easy do seem to be around 7 minute mile pace. So... I, mean, I thought that was interesting because I thought, well, he's actually not really going to be running hugely much faster than that. So is that just a pace that he's just really comfortable with? I mean, for me, that would be like me running all the time at 7.30 pace, which I could do, but it really would be quite tiring. So I think that would be interesting to see how that pans out. Now, Matt and Ben were quite similar in their approach. They do a lot of sort of interval sessions. Ben was really hot on the double threshold days and he does a lot of pace work just slightly faster than marathon pace so he calls it threshold pace which i think for him is about 515 pace compared to about the 523 he needs to, to actually get under the 221 mark that he's targeting but you can see that both matt and ben had a very similar approach they've got 249 miles and 270 respectively so it's a good percentage of their total and if we add in the aerobic threshold miles here we can see that their 80 20 ratio the classic sort of theory that if you do five runs four of them should be fairly easy one fairly hard well they kind of all the break that really because both matt and ben are basically doing the same ratio basically a third of all their runs are hard or harder than the you know just sort of easy pace Whereas Ben, because of these massive amount of seven minute mining he does, basically half his runs are what I called harder than sort of easy. Maybe that's just because he's not doing so much mining, you just think he's making up for time. If you have a look at the races they've done during the block, now Ben, uh, his last race was the Billericay 10K where he did 31.11. That compares very well to his PB early in the year. That was in a really torrential downpour. So I think that was a very good run. He also won the Essex League cross country, which is no mean feat. That's a very good achievement to win a a league like that and he'd run a perhaps more controlled effort in the south of england relays then he had this pb of 67 15 in the copenhagen half marathon so if he's taking that form into the valencia marathon maybe that his target is is very achievable and then he had a bit of a low-key run in a 5000 and then before that he had a load of track races and road races now matt is also coming out of a back at the end of the season when he was really targeting this sub 15 5k and he finally managed it on the 15th of september but also a few days later he actually did a 10k pb as well so he had an amazing sort of week there where he actually did two pbs in four days and then he followed it up with a near miss 5k 1510 just before the one he actually broke it and on a harder course in bristol he did 31 32 also had a very solid half marathon 69 59 but it, the times do show that Perhaps he's actually better at the 5k and 10k, or he'd really put every the effort into that. And it'd be interesting to see how he does in the marathon. I thought that 231 marathon was very impressive coming off the back of that. But it'd be interesting to see whether that sort of theory works out, whether he can actually go substantially faster than that in the actual marathon in Valencia. Now, Ben's approach is obviously somewhat different. He ran the UTMB in August and unfortunately didn't finish. And then he obviously had a bit of time out. Having said that, he was back running in the big half again uh, just over a week later. So a remarkable recovery, really. And he cruised around that in 86 minutes, which is, I think if he manages that pace in the marathon, I think he would have done quite well. Then he didn't really have a conventional build-up of sort of half marathons. He did this Transvolcania race 22nd of October. And then he'd also run the Berlin Marathon. I've got these dates wrong around here, haven't I? In 25th of September. So... I think that's why most of his sort of aerobic threshold runs were at this sort of seven minute pace. I think perhaps he was that he was, wasn't doing too much quality and he was just trying to get those in in lieu of that. Now we have a quick comparison to what Nick Bester and Matt Fox did. Now Nick did slightly more miles than Ben Felton did but I think that's because he had a slightly longer block. His average training pace quite similar to Ben's. 
6.47 for Nick and Matt 6.48 compared to Ben's 6.56. So that's quite comparable. So I guess it does kind of show that the the faster time you have, perhaps the more mileage that sort of tends to equate to. I mean, obviously when Ben was doing 2.25, he was running considerably more mileages than he's been able to manage in the last few months. Interesting that Nick or Matt didn't go above the marathon in the actual build-up, whereas two of the runners here actually raced a marathon in the build-up and then Ben Felton did his half marathon PB just before starting the build-up. So their half marathon times compare quite well. Nick was slightly faster at 66.19 compared to Ben at 67.15 and then Seth did 68.57 so that compares quite similarly as well. I think Seth was able to convert his huge amount of the mileage into the marathon. I mean he really did sort of do some amazingly high weeks but at quite a sort of a slow training pace. So his training methods are very very different to all the other ones here i don't think ben did hardly any runs at 823 pace even targeting a time somewhat slower it's kind of similar for the build up to berlin nick did a very similar amount of mileage matt did a bit more matt actually managed to finish this time he had a very valiant effort there of 224 37 and nick was just nine seconds shy of his sub 220 target so hopefully the next one he'll be able to get that i think he's sort of having a bit of a downtime after then racing three more marathons uh more on a sort of for fun in inverted commas basis but it'll be interesting to see how he comes back maybe he's going to do a spring marathon so what do you think? What, do you, what times do you expect these to do? I think on paper, Ben is likely to run the fastest. Matt's obviously very fit, and if he can convert the 5K and 10K speed that he had into a marathon, then he's going to do very well. And I think Ben, he's got massive amount of experience. I'm interested to see how much better he can run in Valencia than he did in Berlin. So I'll be sure to watch this on Sunday, although it's the same time as the British Masters 5K, so I might have to catch the stream later. So I hope you found this interesting. Like and subscribe on that, and see you next one then. Bye.